What was it, graduation day today? Sure is. What school did you graduate from? Clown College? <laughs> Clown College? I just graduated the Easy Work Small Engine course. That's why I'm here. I'm a certified tech now. See? Oh, I see. You took an eight hour class and now you know all the ins and outs of the lawnmower business, right? Yeah, pretty much. I could do your job now. Ooh! Hey, look out, Junior. We got a new sheriff in town. This huh? guy took an eight hour class. Now he's gonna put us out of business. Yeah, that's right. You better watch your backs, boys. I'm Podunk's newest small engine technician. And the only thing I'm fixing put you out of business. All right, Hotshot, pop quiz. Guy's mowing his grass. Hits a stump in his yard, bends a blade. So he goes and he buys a new blade. And he puts the new blade up. Well, now he's trying to pull it over and it's yanking the rope out of his hand. Well, what's wrong with it? Could be a couple things. From it stopping so suddenly, all those G-forces could have plugged up the muffler so it's hard to pull. Or, if you guys want to get technical, the sap from the tree stump leaked up into the crankcase, mixed with the oil, now the valve stuck, which pulls the rope out of your hand. We covered that in class. <laughs> All right, Junior, you better look out. We got us a regular Carl Childers on our hands here. <laughs> this guy's gonna put us out of business. Yeah, you didn't sling blade anybody before you came over here, did you? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I did. Nah. <laughs> I'm working on a custom mower. Runs and dies on starting fluid. Which tells me spark plugs are crystallized. So I just need a couple spark plugs. That sounds like the problem. I mean, you being certified and all, definitely couldn't be the carpentrator. Well, here you go. Oh, you guys think you know it all? I got one for you. Pop quiz. Guy's got a brand new mower. Only rode twice. Dies out. What brand is it? That doesn't even make any sense. Hold on, Paul. I think I know what the answer is. Is it Easy Works? <laughs> Give me my plugs. Hopefully I don't ever have to come back here again. Yeah, next time you show up, we'll be out of business. <laughs> <laughs> Pterodactyl here. And today's how-to video is going to be on this here. John Deere 1330SE. And what we're going to be repairing on it are the shoot switches. There's electric switches on here that control the, the shoot. And what happens is they get dirty and then the shoot doesn't want to turn and the little flapper don't want to go up and down. Now, you can buy new switches and they're about $60 a piece. Or I can show you how to take them apart, they're real simple, and clean them and put them back together and it'll work just fine. Now the thing is, this isn't a John Deere. It says John Deere on it, but it's not. It's made by Briggs and Scranton. And you can also buy this under the Murray name and Snapper. So you may have one of these that's a Murray that's got these electric switches, or you may have a Snapper, a red Snapper, that's got these switches on it. Okay, to remove these switches, you're just going to need a little screwdriver. Any kind of little screwdriver or a regular screwdriver. And then we're going to flip it up on the front. So if it's full of gas, get yourself a bag. And then put the bag in there so the gas don't come out. And then this, this one's got a shut off on it, so we can shut the gas off. So shut the gas off, put the bag on, and then with brute strength, lift it up. 
It's not bad then. Okay. So pull the plug off. And then there's four little tabs, two on each side. So take the screwdriver and push that tab in and release one side. See, like so. Come on the other side. Push on those tabs. One at a time. And then take switch out. Come on, switchy. See? Pop the switch out. Now we're going to go over the bench, take it apart. Now I always like to mark anything I take apart to make sure you're putting it back together the same way. So I'm going to mark this switch with the Mr. Paint Pen. I'm going to mark it here and I'm going to mark it here. And then to take the switch apart, you just pry right here. See? And then you pry on the other side. And it comes apart. That simple. Nothing's going to fall out on you. And then there's the two little rocker things. And they just come right out. So what happens is, see these contacts, see how they got those marks on there? That's what's keeping it from, from working right. It's dirty. Now you can tell that snowblower don't look like it was used much. So you may have to do this quite often, I don't know. I don't own one of these snowblowers. But that's what it came in for. So just take some fine sandpaper and just sand them contacts. Get that off of there. Now to get at those down there, I made myself a little tool. Now I gotta go get it. Where'd my little tool go? Here it is. I just took a popsicle stick and some tape and a piece of sandpaper and just tore it and just taped it over the end of the popsicle stick like that. Now I can get in there and sand those little contacts down there. Get those little black marks off of there. Sand it till you get those black marks off. All right, now I cleaned them up as best I could. You can see there's still little marks there that's pitted. Those little contacts are pitted, but they're still clean enough. So now you gotta drop these back into their little pockets. So go one, one end down like that, and then let them go. And you should be able to drop them down in there, see? Now the reason we marked it is, so we put it back together the same way. Because you know, when you rock this switch, it makes it go one way and the other way. So if you turn this around, it might work the opposite way. So that's why we marked it. Just push it back down until those lock in. Now if you notice, when I took ours apart, I wasn't careful and I broke one of these off. So if that happens, that's where the HV350 comes in. You can always glue that switch back in to that opening. Because that one switch on that one side, on the left side, even though those 
four tabs are all there. That switch is still loose in there, so I'm gonna glue it in place. And then if I have to take it out again, you could just cut that glue off of there and take it out. It's like it's not like it's in there forever. Okay, I actually super glued that little tab back on, and it's on there strong. So super glue works. All right, it's working. Let's go stick it back on the snow snow trawler. All right, now make sure you put the switch in the right way. You don't want to put it in like this. That's wrong. I'll put it in like this with the little chute up. And then just push it back in there. And then plug the connector back on. But look at this one on this side. See how loose this one is? And those little tabs are all there. So that's where I'm gonna use the Velco 3, HB350. I'm gonna glue this switch back in so it ain't so loose for this customer. Okay, I done glued it with the HB350. I just put a thin amount on. So I just put a little bit on it and then I smoothed it with my finger. And then by tomorrow, this will be good and solid. I won't have to worry about it. Oh, and one more thing. If you want to do this on your snow trower, you can lubricate this little screw mechanism on here. And of course, you can lubricate that with our gel lube that we also sell. Good stuff, real sticky, and lubricates well, even in cold weather which is where this is going to be. So you can, you know, screw it out, spray a little on, screw it in, get the other side, and then do down here too. Spray it all on this gear here, and then make sure you get on the inside. Get inside here and underneath. Because, you know, you got these little bumpers here that ride on there. So make sure you lubricate that all up real good too. You want that chute to move and this little hinge. Make sure you get some on this hinge. Because you know, it's gonna rust there and it's gonna get sticky and you don't wanna break this part. This part looks like it's probably expensive. This little motor, the little drive motor. So lubricate everything up real good. And another tip. Don't park your snow blower full of snow. Make sure you clear the auger and everything out before you park it. That's just a Terrell's tip. Now, it's got a burned out headlight too. This thing, and it's got these funny headlights in there. Look at that thing just fell apart. So you twist these to take them out. This little cover comes off on the back here. That just snaps on. See, it's got these funny bulbs in there. And you're probably looking at that bulb thinking, where am I gonna get that bulb? Well, you know what, the same as 1156. Which is just like a standard taillight bulb. So that's what you could stick in there, an 1156. So you're not trying to find this funny, funny tip bulb. And then that's all you do is turn and twist and lock it in place. All right, I'm gonna turn the gas back on. Because this little chute would work sometimes, sometimes it'll work, but you keep messing with the switches. And both of them would work, they wouldn't work. So let's see if it works.
fixing them switches without having to buy them for $60 a piece. And there's your dinner on this one. There's your dinner. Oh, 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 oh. Uh oh. Pa! Pa, bring me some toilet paper. We ran out in here. Oh, we don't have any toilet paper left because Mr. Poopy Pants forgot to buy some. Hurry up, Pa. Just find me something I can wipe with. Did you find something, Pa? Jeez. Sure did. I'm back sooner than I thought. Did I leave my diploma here? Oh, yep. Sure did. It's up at the counter where you left it. <laughs> okay, thanks. Later, hacks. Oh, man, this is disgusting. <laughs>